Sometimes I'm not the smartest cookie in the jar or the sharpest tool in the toolbox, whatever analogy you wanna use. So today we're gonna disassemble the only functioning car that I have right now. Yay. Yay, we're turboing the BRZ. I've been waiting for this moment for months. As you guys know, I placed the order for this turbo kit on June 1st. It is now mid-September. That is what, June, July, August, like three and a half months for a turbo kit that I was told was in stock. Nevertheless, beside the point, we have all these goodies right here that we need to get on the BRZ, but before we can even start getting that stuff on the BRZ, we need to disassemble it. So there's a decent amount that has to come off this car and that will not be reused at all. The intake, oil pan, oil pickup, headers. I actually think that's all we're disassembling off of the car. And I need to pull out the radiator and the radiator support and all that stuff. So let's get to disassembling the car. I don't wanna to spend too much time talking when I, I just wanna get into this. I just wanna start disassembling all this goodness. So let's do it, let's take it apart. Let's pull it apart, let's do this. All right, my friends, because we're installing a turbo, we need to tap into both coolant and oil for this project. So I've been draining the radiator. It's still going, that's been like 20 minutes. And it's still peeing. I just pulled the oil plug off of the oil pan down there because we're gonna have to tap into oil lines on this block. Uh, one of the galleys is right there, so it makes it extremely accessible for us. So uh, I'm gonna let this stuff drain for another 20 minutes or so just to get all the fluids out so that way I'm not making a mess absolutely everywhere because that radiator is still peeing out. But so far we've taken off the air box, the under tray, the bumper, the bumper crash beam, and pretty sure that's it. So kind of where I think I'm gonna start here is obviously we need to get the radiator out and this core support out. I'm still waiting on the new core support to come in for this guy because we are gonna be losing, or we already lost the hood prop for it, which is why we did the hood struts a while ago. I am gonna be pulling off the radium catch cans. Those will be for sale if anyone wants them because I am going to be using the provided MA Performance uh, catch can setup in the car just because it works a little bit better for the kit. Uh, we're gonna let this continue to drain. Once all the fluids are out, we'll go down there, we'll pull off the stock headers. And then after that, uh, we'll pull the core support off off, the radiator, the AC condenser, and we should pretty much be ready to go to start mocking everything up, getting the turbo ready, getting the turbo clocked to how we need it. And uh, we could probably start running some of the basic piping in here. So let's get at it. Update on disassembly, uh, just pulled off the headers. Extremely easy to do, just like any other Subaru. You've got three, three, and then the two where it connects to either your up pipe, your mid pipe, your over pipe, whatever pipe it's going to. And then we also have the core support off. So this is essentially what the car looks like now. We have one more thing to pull off and then we're done with disassembly. The last thing that has to come off is the oil pan down there. Not looking forward to pulling an oil pan off. They're never fun to pull off, but we have to, just so we have the, uh, full-blown motorsports oil pan going on with the turbo return port. So let's get this guy, or let's get the old one thrown off. It's just a couple of 10 millimeter bolts going around the outside of it. You can see like the pattern on the new oil pan. So we're gonna pull all of those off. Then we're going to take my spatula, wherever I put it, right down there. We're gonna use my spatula, a hammer, a ratchet. We're gonna beat that thing in, break the seal loose, and then uh, pull off the old one. Once we get the old one off, we'll start installing some of the new stuff. Um, I think that, well, obviously the oil pan's gonna be the first thing to go on. So once we get this oil pan off, we'll get the new full-blown motorsports one on, just because that's something that I have to let cure for a while. So I'd like that sealant to cure before even putting oil in the car. So let's get this one off. Not looking forward to doing it, but it needs to be done. Check it out, you guys. Old oil pan and oil pickup are off because we're swapping the oil pickup over to the Killer B one and the pan over to the full-blown Motorsports one. This looks like a pretty good seal that they put on there, good for them. So let me show you guys this new one that we have over here. So this is the full-blown Motorsports pan. The reason that I wanted to go with this one is because I didn't have to want to weld on a bung for the oil return. So we have a bung right here for the oil return. Now, the only downside about this is uh, I'm still waiting for the adapter right here because that's another part that MA performance did not send me was the adapter to go from half inch NPT to dash 10 AN for our oil return line right here. So this will come up and off right about like that. That'll go to the bottom side of the turbo for the oil return. But uh, like I said, still waiting on that. But what we can do is get this Killer B uh, oil pickup on the car. It's just two bolts that hold it on. Comes with a new seal, the new bolts right there. 
and then we can get the black RTV thrown on this guy and then get this guy up in the car as well. So this uh, should hold more oil as well. And then in addition to the pan and the pickup on the BRZ, I also have an oil cooler that I'm waiting on, which will sit like right down here and then tap up into the uh, oil filter location. So that way we have cool oil going back into the car and we're not gonna be overheating anything and uh, completely destroying the motor. Because with the uh, STI out there, not having any engine in it at all, uh, we need to make this somewhat reliable. But just got the new oil pickup on there. You guys can see it right in the middle of the screen. I need to go up there with a razor blade and clean off all the old gasket before we even put the new gasket on the new pan. So let me get that cleaned off. We'll get the new one sealed up and we'll get it up on the car. So that way we can have our oil pan at least back on for right now. All right, you guys have seen me seal an oil pan before with the Killer B1 on the STI when we did that a couple, it was like a year ago actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a bead going all the way around this. I'm gonna smooth it out with my finger. And then I'm gonna do another bead going around the inside of all these holes. So that way when we squish it up against the block, it seals properly. So I use this Ultimate RTV Black stuff. It is rated for extreme temperatures. I don't remember what it is. It's gotta say on here, right? It doesn't say what it's rated to, but I know it's rated to uh, some good temps. So. Let's get this thing sealed up so we can get it thrown in the car. I'm just gonna get this thrown in the car because I have sealant all over my hands. I just don't wanna touch the camera right now. So after I get it in the car, I'll wash my hands, grab the camera, come back, and I will show you guys the finished product of our newly installed full-blown motorsports oil pan. I feel like this is going much smoother than I was expecting it to. So far, new oil pan is on, the seal needs to cure. But it was much, much easier than doing it on the STI. When we did it on the STI, those back four bolts that sit on top of the oil pan behind the subframe were the worst to get to. But this one, super simple. So on the stock BRZ oil pan, there's only three bolts in the rear and they're all accessible with just a like three inch extension. You're able to pull them all off. Hello, small dog. So the new oil pan looks honestly pretty good if I say so myself. Looking at it, it is a little bit bigger, super easy to put on. Our turbo drain port sits right down there, so that way, uh, we once we get everything mocked up, we can get the turbo return line going back down to the oil pan. But I wanna get the headers mocked up next and get them on the car, just to see where turbo placement kind of lands us and how we need to clock the turbo to be able to get everything on here. We got the turbo mocked up on the car. Something that Matt and I are doing right now is Matt is clocking the turbo, but that means we're just rotating it. So there's bolts on the exhaust housing that you can loosen. And then after those are loosened, you're able to rotate it. So you need the oil port on the top, the feed to be up. You don't want it clocked one way or the other. So just loosen the bolts on the exhaust side. You're able to rotate it. Once uh, we're done clocking, it'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. But uh, so far, so good on this. This is moving a little bit quicker than I thought it would. So Matt clocked the turbo for us like I was talking about. So these are the bolts that I was talking about. You just loosen those, this whole housing spins. You can do the same thing on the compressor side. There's bolts back there, the whole thing spins. So you want the oil oil feed to be vertical. You want it to be up, not angled. And then I also got the drain port thrown on there. So it's just a silver adapter with an AN fitting on there. So make sure you get those nice and tight so that way you're not leaking oil anywhere. But uh, I don't I don't quite know where to go after getting the turbo on here. Uh, I can't put the downpipe on yet because I am still waiting for the gasket because MA Performance did not provide one. So thanks a lot, MA Performance. I can't put the intercooler on yet because I'm waiting on the modified core support still. Uh, we do have our oil pan, but I can't connect the oil drain because I'm still waiting on that fitting also. So this is uh, not a complete kit as advertised. So actually the next thing I wanna do is I wanna mock the downpipe up on here and get the external wastegate on the header. So that way we just have the external wastegate done with. Update for you guys, uh, oil is pretty much done on the turbo. We have oil feed right here going in. You tap into the top of the block right there. They give you all the fittings just to be able to run this oil line here. Next up, I have the uh, I have the downpipe just kind of mocked up. I'm still waiting on this gasket to show up so I can't fully bolt this up yet. But what we can do is get the external wastegate put on the header down here. So it'll come off right here and then the dump tube's gonna point straight down at the ground so that way we're not shooting fire at anything and melting anything on the engine because that is the last thing that we wanna do, isn't it, Matt? Indeed. 
indubitably, indubitably. For spring pressure on this wastegate, we are just leaving it as is at seven PSI, planning on running the turbo at like eight to nine PSI. So we're not gonna be making a ton of boost, but it'll be enough to, you know, fully actuate the wastegate whenever we need it to open. So we're using a Turbo Smart Comp 40, ex for 40 mil, 40 millimeter external wastegate. So let's get this guy bolted on there. Same, same way we did this on the STI when I did the external wastegate video. Make sure you have the valve seats pressed in there. Uh, everything uses V-band clamps, so it's all nice and tight. So after this, we're making good progress. Good progress has been made in one day. This might be a long video, but who cares? So the last thing that we're gonna do for tonight on the Turbo BRZ setup, because we've gotten a lot done today, surprisingly, is uh, get the radiator fans modified so that way we can get the radiator back in the car. I'm still waiting on that modified core support from uh, MA Performance. So as soon as I get the modified core support in, we can actually run intercooler piping. But once we get the radiator support in the, or once we get the radiator back in the car with the modified fans, then we can start running the radiator, or then we can start mounting the intercooler and getting some of the intercooler piping figured out. Uh, but so far, so good. Can't fully mount up the downpipe quite yet just because we are waiting on that gasket. But let me kind of show you guys what we're doing with this radiator fan because we are keeping the stock shroud. Don't mind all the mess out here, but this is our stock radiator fan. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off all of these little like fan supports going around the fan. And we're gonna lose this fan completely. After we've done that, uh, the new fan's gonna go right behind it, which I believe is still in that box over there. No, it's right here. So this fan will go right behind it, so that way we still have two fans. We just need a slimmer fan for the passenger side, just because our turbo sticks out uh, decently further than it, well, now that we have a turbo, it sticks out, so you, you see what I'm saying. So we're gonna, Matt, I have an extension cord right there for you. Bro, there's a... There's an outlet right there. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're gonna use the outlet. So Matt's gonna cut this up because uh, I will fully admit any day of the week that Matt's cutting is a lot cleaner than mine. <laughs> so we're going to get this thing cut and the new fan in. So I was going to stop at the radiator, but Matt has motivated me to keep going and uh, he's down to work too. So. Uh, we're gonna mess with the intercooler stuff right now. We've been kind of mocking up some of the piping. I'm going to jump on getting the crash bar installed on the car so that way we can bolt the intercooler up so that way we can mock up all the intercooler piping together uh, just to make sure that everything is hunky-dory, everything's happy so that way nothing is kind of out of place and if we do need to correct anything, we have time to now versus doing it later down the road. So Matt and I really got on a streak there and uh, I just threw it on a time lapse and we just got like to knock and stuff out. Uh, all we really got on was the charge piping, the intercooler, the blow off valve and kind of got all that mocked up. We were originally just gonna mock it up but then we decided to just fully install it. So let me show you guys this intercooler piping setup. The BRZ is looking pretty badass right now. So uh, as you can see, the BRZ definitely looks a lot different than how it did a little bit ago. So we've got the intercooler. Uh, one problem we were having is MA Performance tack welded this crash beam wrong. So it was about a half an inch off. So there was a lot of stretching and we did enlarge a couple holes to be able to get the crash bar on there, but it's solid. It's not going anywhere. Probably stiffened up a lot, a lot of the chassis a lot more. Uh, intercooler piping is bolted up. These clamps right here are so incredibly close to the AC condenser that we had to lose the brackets for the top of the AC condenser. It's still on there solid, so it's not going anywhere, but cold side comes up wraps up to our throttle body up here. We have our turbo smart blow off valve. We still need to plumb like all the vacuum lines for everything and whatnot. So uh, we are running external wastegate. As you guys saw, the external wastegate is right down there. It is a turbo smart 40 millimeter uh, comp external wastegate. Uh, on the hot side of the piping, it comes up, wraps down and then goes down to the turbo down there. So pretty nice setup. Uh, a couple things I'd like to say 
about MA Performance's kit is the fit and finish of everything looks incredible. They did a very good job on the craftsmanship of the kit. However, when it came to customer service, absolutely awful. They, I'm missing so many like small pieces that they just did not send me, such as like gaskets, hardware, uh, drain fittings for the oil pan, all this stuff, and I had to buy it on Amazon. So customer service wise, MA Performance, I am not impressed at all. Uh, but craftsmanship of the product, very good. Uh, wait time for this was kind of bullshit also, but you know, it is what it is. So when I actually get my turbo to downpipe gasket, we can actually put the downpipe on, but because that's something we weren't sent, uh, that's gonna have to wait a little bit. So, and we still need to like fully put on this turbo blanket too, but it's looking good. We still need to do the catch cans, do the boost controller, the fuel injectors, uh, run all the vacuum line. There's still a lot we need to do for this. We just have like the bare bones of the turbo kit here and on the car. And then uh, once we get the modified core support that goes across the top here, we can uh, bolt the intake up to that so that way it's not all like floppy do like this, but super, super happy with this. And the BRZ just looks so much more mean now. I can't wait, cannot wait for you to get tuned, my baby girl. All right, you guys, so that is where I'm going to end it tonight though, because it's about 11 p.m. right now, so we got a lot of this knocked out today. Uh, we still have the oil cooler to put on also, which I get on Tuesday, so first start of the BRZ with this new setup. Should be later this week, and it should sound like an older STI. It's a two liter, unequal length header turbo engine, so it should sound solid once it's all put together. But if you guys like the video, I it's a pretty long one too. So if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue. Like the STI, which is outside of the garage right now because we had to push it out. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up. What are you doing? We got an EG33 we're swapping into the STI that we just sent out to the builder yesterday. We got the turbo BRZ going on. Ooh, why would you want to miss any of this? So one of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!